Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Manning Publications. If you use the discount code YTFisher at checkout, you'll get 40% off my Docker in Motion course. It is five and a half hours long and it teaches the fundamentals of Docker. Go to howtocowell.net forward slash Docker in Motion to get my course or other video courses and books from Manning Publications. Link in the description below. Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about streaming and Twilio. I have the pleasure of talking to Gary Hopkin. Hi, Gary. How's it going? Have you had a good week so far? Yes. Hi, Peter. Things are great. Thanks. Yeah. Busy week. Busy, busy week. Uh, technical difficulties, all sorts of problems. My MacBook has gone into the shop. So. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We're all good. We're all good. I got backups here. It's fine. Good. Backups are good. Backups are good. So before we get into Twilio, let's talk a little bit about your background. How did you get into coding and web development? Um, so uh, where I grew up, so you may be able to tell from my very thick accent that <laughs> I'm I'm from South Wales, um, and where I grew up is a, a town called Port Talbot, which some people may have heard of because it has like European's biggest steel plant there. It's oh wow! Huge steelworks. So I went in to work there in '99. Um, that's how old I am. Um, in 1999, and it, those of an older persuasion may remember that during that time we had a uh, problem with uh, computers not being able to roll over to the year 2000 correctly. Oh, so the Y2K bug. Of, yeah. The Y2K bug, yeah. Yeah, the mythical Y2K bug. So, <laughs> um, yeah, lots of coders had, had stored years in a two-digit field, which meant that nobody really knew what was going to happen when 99 mm. nine became zero, 00. Like, how is that all going to work? So, yeah, there was a lot of work going on to essentially check all the microprocessors that were on the entire plant. Uh, it's a huge plant, so... That sounds more exotic than it was. It was really like checking a spreadsheet, making phone calls to manufacturers going, is this part? Uh, Are you okay? Blind? Yes. Okay. We can tick that off. <laughs> so it wasn't, it was just a, a, like a contract position when I would have been 18, I guess, you know, really young, but I, they took, they, they took me on there on the process control team as a developer, um, working mainly back then, um, in uh, classic ASP, uh, Microsoft's ASP, yeah. and because it was the it was the golden era of intranets, right, where every company had an internal only mm. like website. But this was perfect because the the licenses for the software to display figures about what was happening on the plant was incredibly expensive, but it was all held in a centralized Oracle database. So we just decided, well, we can save some money for read-only purposes. We could just read from this database using some free technology, which Mm -hmm. ASP was not. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it was fun. It was fun. And, And then I moved into PHP for my own personal projects because I'm like, I can't afford to run Microsoft SQL Server, Internet Information Server for a hobby project, right? Mm. But there was this free open source alternative with mm. Apache and MySQL and um, PHP. So mm. that's how I got started working uh, as a developer, really. Cool. So how did you how did you get into learning it? What was the what was the thing that drove you to to that? Um, it's a good question. Like I, I've always been a huge fan of of computer gaming. So, mm-hmm. and I've played a lot in my time of like very badly, but I've played a lot of things like Counter Strike and um, these these kind of semi organized online PvP games. So, mm-hmm. um, I was in a member of a, a Counter Strike clan, like we all were, like who were playing back in the day. Mm-hmm. We're, we're looking at mm-hmm. um, early, very early two thousands, and uh, the. The quality of a a clan was always judged by the quality of its website, right? So I wanted to make this impressive website that could sort of have new system that any member could do. And then it's just a case of doing it, right? I've always Mm. found, like, I learn by doing. I learn by just trying to do something and then Mm. doing it really badly, but doing it. And Mm -hmm. then thinking, oh, I could have done that so much better, so doing it again, right? Mm. And that's kind of – I didn't really have any formal – uh, training, software engineering training. I've just picked it up as I go and you can, t- you can kind of tell, <laughs> but you know, it's fine. It's fine. That's really cool. Can you talk a little bit about the journey there on, on the, the, the learning, the, the, uh, the code? I mean, what was the first things you, you looked at? Was it, was it like, um, HTML, CSS, or did you look at things like databases? What was the first thing you were playing with? 
And um, well, commercially, we I was it was all about like just getting data out of a database. Mm-hmm. That was so. We, I mean, my journey was working with Classic ASP. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you don't know, that's almost a pre. I don't know if it's a precursor to PHP. I think like if my history r- reminds me, it was like Microsoft's version of P- PHP using. And VB script instead of PHP is like sure. the underlying language. Yeah, I remember but it was server side VB script essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that the fact that I started there is like kind of funny, really. But in a way, it's it gives you an amazing grounding because mm. it's the same skills. Mm-hmm. Like I remember the moment where I just couldn't understand. I can get data out and I can get it like dumped somewhere, but how the hell? What am I supposed to do with this? And then realizing, oh these are tools for building HTML pages <laughs> with the data. Like, it, because I come from a background of things like Visual Basic and Delphi and these kind of, you use the data and bind it to something in the mm-hmm, UI. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a big step to go from that to, oh, I loop over this data set and create a table from it. Now, mm. right, now I kind of have that understanding, mm. which is like, still things I do like today, you know, mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. you're still doing exactly the same thing. You're abstracting everything, hopefully into like a view layer and things, but you're still literally building HTML of from yeah. server side scripting, right? So, yeah. It's just named slightly differently. You're using, exactly. you're using different tools, but the same sort of methodologies. I mean, yeah, if you're using Laravel and you're using new Laravel six, which is out like this week or next week or whatever, and you you know cutting edge using eloquent to pull data out and whatever you know s- smarter or whatever template and engine you want to render stuff out twig mm-hmm. you're still essentially building websites mm. from php scripts right you're still building html and that that was a big deal for me to realize that and then moving to php is kind of trivial because the theories are all the same mm. and and that is the important thing really and i think that's the same everywhere i love php just because i can get things done so you know mightily quickly mm. and i tend to do a lot of projects that are just for the web so why would i change right sure but right yeah yeah that's the, a- the language is trivial to me like i would happily use python to do the data query and then build some html if if i you know if that was what i was most familiar with yeah that's a very good point you made there about the 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 same it's the same things just different you know um i i often get asked what kind of stuff should a new coder learn and i guess really it's learn the fundamentals of how everything fits together and you know the tools can you can change them they come and go but just knowing what the view layer means and what the model yeah. layer means, you know, the, understand the core concepts. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I, I mean, I think like the the second advancement in my career was then when I started learning more, um, more fundamental principles that I glossed over, like HTTP. What is it? How does it work? Sure. You know, I wish I wish I'd learned that earlier in my career, if I'm mm. honest, because everything I do realistically is now built on top of HTTP, right? I mean, right. I mean, we've got there's some WebSocket stuff that I work around now, and some other which I don't really understand, but I'm using it mm-hmm. via abstraction. Mm-hmm. But realistically, like 99% of the stuff I do works with HTTP, so I wish I'd understood what that was a little earlier, because mm-hmm. like most things in programming, it sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is right when other people are talking about it it's like oh they, they are so smart but when you actually sit down and figure it out it's like oh actually that's an incredibly simple concept it's just a set of rules mm. for text to be sent over tcp ip it's like not complicated at all yeah so. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true um so how did that uh, journey progress into to i know we're probably pushing on a bit but what how did that progress no, into sure. working into twilio what what what, what, um, what happened I mean, I went from working in the steelworks to working like I was then not. So I wanted to do more, more and more programming. And the job in the steelworks was a very small amount of programming and a very large amount of like third level help desk work and getting out onto the plant. Mm -hmm. Incredibly, like it's so cool, but really dangerous job. And like, yeah, I was like, I I don't really want to be doing that anymore. You know, it's... (laughs) So I wanted, I wanted to be coding. I loved coding and, and it, I was, I was only essentially allowed to code in my spare time when there was nothing else to be done. Mm-hmm. Then I was allowed 
to sit down and like do some of these vanity projects. So I became um, like a, a, a contractor doing like jobbing contract work, working from home a lot. I worked for a company who were like doing these massive projects for huge house, household names mm. as a contractor. Like Intel was the one of the first things I did. But they just generally like, they were awful. They had no idea what they were doing. They were a flash company essentially, right? That's how long ago we're going back. Yeah. So they were making these amazing front ends for mm. companies like Intel. Mm. Um, but they needed the data to be produced in XML that this flash could read in and they had no idea how to do it. And we, I don't know. I don't even remember how I stumbled into that at this point, but I was effectively, I was writing the world's worst PHP script to process <laughs> yeah. spreadsheets. They would send me a spreadsheet once a week, like say on a lunchtime on a Wednesday mm. and by 9am on a Thursday, that data had to be processed and imported into the database so that if I'm a reseller and I want to know how I'm doing in this competition, I can log into this website and it'll do a nice pa- journey along the path of how many things I've sold. I see. But of course, the the data, the spreadsheets were never in the same format every week. <laughs> it was just a case of like just just somehow get this data in and yeah. validated. Um, but it, I mean, it was very well paid, and I got a reputation quite quickly of being able to get stuff done, mm-hmm. even if it wasn't the best quality. You know, in these things where th- this was never ever going to run more than six months, right? This right. was a fixed length promotion that intel were doing that was going away after six months so in my mind it's like i don't care how bad that code is Mm. like i'm getting paid you know relatively well for for a 20 year old to Mm. get this done and i'm gonna get it done and Mm. it was great but i got a reputation then for getting stuff done by hook or by crook which is like quite ironic because now i like i'm all about quality and (laughs) even if it's only six months you should test it anyway but but, uh, like uh, people who know me who've known me from early in my career will laugh at where i am now compared like i didn't care as long as it works i don't care you know just get stuff done get stuff done get stuff done but yeah yeah, and then i mean i worked for some some relatively big companies i went to work for rove um, which is a PHP consultancy mm-hmm. that I'm really proud to have been a part of twice. They're an amazing group of people. Um, but you know, the first time I left because JetBrains were looking for a developer advocate for PHP Storm. So I was like, oh, I definitely, like, I can't turn that job down, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I loved. I really, really, I mean, JetBrains is an amazing mm-hmm. company and what an amazing tool. Um, um, and I, I was there for a couple of years. The, the, I, the, sorry, I, I just to cut, cut in. I actually um, saw you speak. It was a talk about uh, JetBrains and PHP Storm. It was you, you rattled off so many different things that uh, <laughs> yeah. people yeah. should know in JetBrains. It was like wow, my eyes was my eyes are open. It was such a good talk. It was good. It was good. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, I've been speaking since quite early on. I went to um, a, a conference. PHP Northwest conference in Manchester, mm-hmm. which doesn't exist anymore, sadly. They mm-hmm. had a, it was a great conference. Um, I went there, oh God, I wouldn't know, like I guess, I'm guessing 2012, but I wanted to be speaking. As soon as I realized that there was a subset of people who would get up on stage and speak, I was like, oh, I want to be doing that. So it was amazing because I was speaking at ZenCon the next year. Wow. But, wow. Oh, that, that, that sounds like, oh my God, yeah. look what a go-getter he is. But it was not like that at all. I already had a relationship with Zen through, sure. a, I've done, I'd done so much contributions for the Zen framework by then. Um, mainly stuff you won't see on GitHub, mainly things like the docs, which weren't version controlled and, um, lots of process stuff. Like it's not all about what you see on GitHub with these big open source projects, right? The management yeah. and organization stuff. Mm. So I had, I almost feel like they picked me to talk to say, Oh, the least we can do for what he's done over the last couple of years is to like fly him out to Santa Clara. And you know, that that's the truth. Like it's easy for people to go, Oh no, no, you deserved an imposter syndrome. But in this case, I don't think I did, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was a massive eye opener. It was great to mm-hmm. speak. I remember that I was speaking after um, Derek Rethens of um, uh, XDebug and PHP's internal daytime mm-hmm. creator. Uh, the first talk I ever did. And as I walked into the room, they're like sitting. It's a, a relatively small room, but there's completely full people sitting in the aisle, stood at the back. 
and he's overrunning and I have to like walk down to the front. There's nobody in the room to like help me from the conference, which is normally now you'd have somebody there, but mm-hmm. they just like, oh, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> so I have to walk up to the front and he's like, oh, have you got a question? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm speaking next. And I have to like, you know, I have to set up because you're already like five minutes late. Oh, right. Sorry. As he's taking his laptop and walking and talking and then everyone just follows him out of the room. And there's like <laughs> three people in there for me. And, <laughs> but it's great right yeah. it's it's yeah i i was very lucky to be able to get to do that at the point where i wanted to start doing it because i learned so much from those early years about speaking mm. 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 yeah the, the, how many talks have you done in in total do you think oh god uh i would say over 100 at this point i would guess wow okay that's uh... i would guess that yeah it's like i've done a lot of talks at user groups and stuff as well sure Sure. Um, uh, yeah, I w- it's got to be close to 100, if not over it. I don't know. Is there is is there any sort of particular topic that you focus on? Anything that I'm interested in <laughs> at, the, at the moment, like that's the truth, or anything. Like I, I I've I've, ri- I've written a blog post. I really wanted to write a blog uh, book about this. It's never going to happen. So I released what I'd written as a, a, a blog post, um, mm-hmm. where I talk about how I decide what to talk about. That's not just a shameless pitch for my blog post it is actually i'm just saying that what i did on what i say on the blog is often i'll submit talks on something i want to learn more about which sounds like incredibly dangerous Mm. but uh, it's 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 like oh i've been waiting i've been meaning to look at dollar x forever Mm-hmm. Like I'll submit a talk on it and then I'll have to go and learn it if I that's, get accepted. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite bold. That's very interesting. You, you, um, you're setting a deadline for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so lucky though, right? I, I know so many people. I've got so many good friends. Like I, I'm, and I mercilessly abuse their friendship by getting them to have a call like this and say, mm-hmm. Oh, um, can you help me? I need to do a talk on this and I haven't really learned enough about it. So it's bad. <laughs> right. But. I don't tend to do that so much anymore, mainly because there's, I'm work, because now that I'm working at Twilio, I get time to spend looking at cool new stuff. And, mm. you know, I, I just speak about anything that's piqued my interest. At the, uh, you know, when I'm writing the abstract, I'm like, do you know that? That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to write an abstract for that. And I've mm-hmm. written probably at least 10 abstracts. Mm. that I pitched to conferences, never got accepted and they're in the bin and I never got to speak on them. You know, that's mm. kind of the way that I approach it is, oh, that's really cool. Like I've been looking at um, a product that Twilio does called Sync, which is like web sockets, a way of keeping your client JavaScript and the server in sync mm-hmm. automatically. And I think it's really cool. And it's a danger for me submitting on Twilio products that people will think, oh, he's only – um, getting accepted because Twilio is sponsoring and he's going to pitch us this product, which is a real mm. tightrope I have to walk now. Okay. So if I'm at a conference speaking about, um, I don't know, let's say Authy is another talk that I really, really like. Like it, adding two-factor authentication to a login form is something that most people in PHP land should know how to do, mm-hmm. in my mind. Right? It's, in this day and age, even if you think that you don't need to have two-factor authentication. You probably do. (laughs) Yeah. Because passwords are everywhere and breaches are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you get breached and somebody gets the password breached and then, you you know, they use the same password for their online banking or whatever. You know what I mean? I just feel like 2FA is Mm – and Authy makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. But what happens is I'll pitch that talk at a conference. They'll – accept the talk mm. based on the fact that I've submitted it. There's no sponsorship talk at this point. And then what we'll say is I'll say, look, Twilio will pay for my flights and accommodation if we can just trade that for the most basic level of sponsorship. Because seeing as I'm coming there to speak, say it's a conference, a bit of money, Twilio will pay for my my travel. Mm-hmm. You know, are you interested? And you'll see a lot of conferences now have like speaker angel sponsors or yeah, okay, yeah. community sponsors. And they will we'll trade because – I get I can buy the travel and hotel easily yeah. enough. You know, yeah. uh, part of my job is to travel. Sure. And the conference gets to save a few hundred quid 
yeah. you know, and pay for my travel. But when I'm when I'm on the on the roster, and then people see Twilio sponsoring, it's like, they put, oh, yeah, they put two and two together oh, and make four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then I'm fighting the battle yeah. of going. Actually, no, I really think yeah, this product yeah. is a, it, it, not even this product. Like, if yeah. I didn't work for Twilio, I'd think this was brilliant. I'm not trying <laughs> to sell to you. So it comes with its own problems, you know. But, yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So, okay, you you mentioned two Twilio products there. In in a nutshell, what what is Twilio? Um, so we're a company that it has a number of communication APIs, basically, right. and most well known for sending and receiving SMSs and sending and receiving voice calls. So mm-hmm. the the core business is a bridge between the telephony network and the internet, essentially. Right. Because the telephony network is like this magical, mythical thing that <laughs> none of us as developers want to be able to actually understand. Yeah. But it is pretty cool to be able to send SMS messages from your PHP application, right? right? Or from your Java app or from your whatever. It is kind of cool to be able to say, oh, your order's ready. Um, come and pick it up, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. It's something that is – SMS is so more immediate than any mm-hmm. other form of communication at the moment, I think. Yeah, that's true. That it, you know, yeah. it's valuable stuff. Yeah. I mean, even like just ordering something from, from uh, an online shop and you – you get a message saying that this is your delivery period. I mean, that's really good. Um, I, I and, and it's you as a customer, it, you feel different getting a text message than getting an email. I think it's more personal slightly because it's yeah, the- I, yeah. I mean, we we all of our research and all of the research that hasn't been done by uh, by Twilio, you know, research shows that. Mm. It's the most immediate form mm. of communication at the moment, mm-hmm. which is why people is, will spam you with SMS. <laughs> but people, you know, if you get a notification on your phone, if your phone beeps, you're mm. almost certainly going to look at it, right? Even if you shouldn't at that point. Right, like, oh, yeah. I got a notification, what's that, right? Yeah. So so the core, that's the core business. And we've, we've, I mean, Twilio, you, you've either heard of them or you won't. Like nobody who I know outside of tech will have had a clue when I say oh, I'm going to work for Twilio because, but if I'd have said that I'm going to work for some of our customers, they'd have known exactly who they were. Like sure. if I'd have said, Oh, I'm going to work for Uber or Airbnb or Lyft or eBay or, you know, ev- everyone who sent an SMS messages essentially are using, are using Twilio. Anyone who's awesome. like Airbnb use it in a really nice way so that Airbnb have the, the phone number of the the renter and the phone number of the person who's renting. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you want to communicate, you press a button in the app and it connects you anonymously so that the, the person you never know the, the uh, phone number of the person on the other end, right. Which is really important Mm. in this day and age. Mm. So there's, that's kind of a prime use case that is Twilio is used for. Yeah. I get that. That's like, that's almost like using your phone number as a key that unlocks some private area with the link. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but and then there's all the other products we've got, like WhatsApp and uh, Facebook Messenger and all that good oh, wow. stuff. You can you can programmatically work with those chat um, yeah. APIs, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Seeing a lot more and more people taking that up. And then there's the whole other raft of stuff that we do that nobody knows about, like Authy. Yeah, you mentioned Authy, um, yeah. Uh, Flex, which is a programmable um, call center application, okay. um, which is amazing. Um, yeah. We have some big customers on that product. That's only been launched a year. Um, and then and then there's all the dev tools like Twilio Functions, which is essentially AWS Lambda JavaScript, but free for Twilio <laughs> customers. So you can just – you don't need to host your, pro- your product that you're writing with Twilio anywhere else. You can just mm. run it as – functions as a service and then Twilio Studio, which is like a drag and drop tool for building workflow. So if you don't want to actually code, wow. that's really good for prototyping and stuff. I don't know. Like I would be skeptical of people who use that in production. Um mainly because you don't have anything in version control and you're mm. not like there's no like review of <laughs> modifications to the process and all that. It feels very dangerous to me. People <laughs> love it, you know. People, it's brilliant for like prototyping something mm. really quickly. Mm. Like uh, you know, we do uh, when we're at the booth, we do this. Um, send you can send a photo to a WhatsApp number, and then it'll put a frame around it with a little sort of 
uh, title of the conference and maybe a little, you know, elephant in the corner or whatever, and then it'll send it back to you. And then you can say print and it'll, there's a printer on the booth and it'll print it out and you come over the booth and pick it up. Right. Now that, that's kind of cool, but that's all built using Twilio studio. So that's just drag and drop. If this comes in and it has a picture attachment, send it over to this, uh, different API that'll add, that'll add the Mm. picture. And when it comes back, send the message back, you know, Mm. that's all done using Twilio studio. It's really cool. Yeah. I, I, the, the developer in me feels scared about, anything that's not inversion control. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so how long have you been working uh, at Twilio for? I think it's, it's oh, four or five months yeah. since May, I yeah. think. So not, not that long. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy there though, you know, yeah. I have to be honest. And you're the, uh, you're, you're a developer ev- evangelist, right? Yeah. Developer evangelist uh for PHP, essentially. Yeah. What's so? What's what's the uh, what's the what's the what do you do in a in a typical day? What's the what's the thing that you do? So the the majority of my job, or the most in my mind, the most important part of my job is this kind of thing, right? Mm. Connecting with developers, however that may be. And it, we've talked a lot about Twilio, and that's like obviously because you're interested and I like to talk about what excites me and that's something that's exciting me at the moment. Mm -hmm. But my job is not to sell or market uh, or or tech support for Twilio. My job is to to support the the community, my community being PHP developers primarily Mm -hmm. um, and the South Wales development community kind of secondary Mm -hmm. or or equally. But, um, and I do that via getting out to events, by speaking, we sponsor events, um, where we may or may not have a booth. I find the booth kind of useful because it means people know where to find you. Mm-hmm. I, I help them when, when we're at the booth, I help people if they have questions about Twilio, I help people if they have questions about anything. Like it's not, we're not there to just be salespeople. And that's a kind of, I find that really important. I'm yeah. more than, you know, yeah. I'm more than happy to talk about Twilio if that's what people want to talk about. But I'm also more than happy to talk about the latest drama in the internals community, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever, you know, this, we're not paid to mm. like, to, to shill Twilio products essentially mm. as, mm. as easy as it is to do. Cause it's so cool. It, you know, that's not what I'm about really. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I must say from an outsider who's, who's gone to conferences and seen Twilio booths, uh, on the conferences, uh, there is that feeling that the Twilio people are developers first yeah. and that's really nice because you kind of like have an instant connection. It's not like you're speaking to someone who's marketing some new product or some thing that uh, PHP developers could use. It's you're talking to a developer about a potential solution, which is, which is great. So yeah, I totally dig that. So um, you do a, a, a bit of live streaming un- yeah, so- un- under Twilio. What, 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 so what's the what's the 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 tricks with that? Um, so yeah, the the part of my job is obviously connecting to developers in person, and so I get out to conferences. I go to user groups as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'll probably see you next month because I think you're P- speaking at PHP Southwest next I, month. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll get down to meet you in person awesome. there for sure. Awesome. But um, sp- and and then speaking. Um, but then the other part of the job when, so I'm either, I'm either away or I'm mm-hmm. working from home. That's kind of the two states that I have. Right. And when I'm working from home, I do a lot of stuff like content generation, as you would say in the modern, it's a horrible term, but it is what it is, right? So I'll write some blog posts, record some YouTube videos, mm-hmm. um, whatever really, you know, whatever I think will support the community. I, I, I may, I may write about Twilio products. I may write about anything I feel like in PHP. It doesn't. I may record about the same. Um, live streaming has been part of that. It's mm-hmm. been part of me trying to figure out ways I can add value to the community without when I'm when I'm not at events. Um, and it's interesting because I'm I'm really trying to to monitor and gauge what I'm doing, how long it takes, and what value it's giving people. And live streaming's part of the attempt. I haven't been doing it. Um, that long, like probably 20 streams in, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I love it. I really, 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 really enjoy doing it. So there's no, you know, there's no pain for me to be, 
like sat coding and, and talking to some of my friends on chat and mm -hmm. having people help me out, I think is great. Um, it's just, I, I'm not one, um, as a fellow streamer, I'll be interested to know your opinions here, but I'm, I'm not, I'm very unsure of the benefits at this moment in time. This is very much an ongoing experiment for me. Mm -hmm. Um, to see where the value is and what what it's all about realistically. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 w w when you say value, what what is it that you're trying to pin? Is it is it uh, value in terms of engagement or something well, else? Well, for me, yeah, I'm doing this as part of a job of work, right? Mm. So, and Twilio are absolutely fantastic in letting me go about doing whatever I want to do. But my question, the question I'm trying to answer at the moment in, mm -hmm. you know, I've been in the job since May is I feel like my biggest value to, to, to Twilio as a developer evangelist is being out and about and meeting developers face to face. That's just where my skill sets lie. Other evangelists have, diff, you know, have different sets of skills and, and, and I feel like that's what I do bet, best. Mm -hmm. But then my question is when I'm not out and about at events, how am I spending my time the most effectively to be helping out my community as much as I can in mm. so for one hour of my time streaming how does that compare or let's say if I do a four-hour stream how does that compare to if I'd spent that time writing a blog post or recording a YouTube video um mm. that's the questions I'm trying to answer yeah and okay that's the, the good questions um yeah I mean I would say that um writing a blog uh, writing a blog post it's something that you once you've written it, it's there and it's, it, you can edit it. It's something that, uh, is, you can share the link to, it, you know, if forevermore with, with, with streaming, you have, um, you know, it's, it's quite, um, that there is a sort of an almost an intimate, uh, intimate, that's not the right, right word. There's, um, a very close connection between yeah. you and the audience. With blog posts, there's this distant connection. There's the, yeah. the thing I wrote two years ago and people are still reading it. You get the comments, but then they're not real time. So, and with Twitch, of course, uh, I don't know about your account, but with mine, it, it closes every two weeks. So every, every two weeks, the, um, the videos get removed. I think it might be better in further accounts or whatever. So what I've been doing is archiving those to YouTube because that's kind yeah. of like my sort of um, discovery platform, if you will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. A, it, I guess it depends on where you want to build the community, right? So yeah, I think the I think the biggest problem I've got is uh, every everybody you speak to who's done relatively well on Twitch will tell you that you have to have a schedule and you have to stick to the schedule, right? That's kind of Twitch 101 basics yeah. in order to build, you know, because what you ultimately you want to be building a platform. Like if yeah. I'm streaming for four hours a week and I, I'm like twice a week for two hours mm -hmm. and both of those streams have a hundred viewers, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would question the value of me spending, mm -hmm. say, let's say for four hours streaming, it's mm -hmm. six hours because I'm probably going to do half an hour to an hour of prep. Maybe sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes I don't need to because I know exactly where I left off. There's a lot of behind the you scenes. Know? Yeah. <laughs> And I'm trying to minimize that. Like I'm trying to just reveal that on stream. Like mm. that's another part of what I'm trying to do. But I don't think anybody would question the fact that if I was then streaming for three times a week and streaming for 10 hours a week at a hundred, if there's a hundred viewers every stream, mm -hmm. the, the benefits are obvious. The problem I've got is I cannot keep to a, to a schedule because I'm away. Mm. I am away at least 30%, if not more of the month. Mm at events, doing this, doing other things. So then the question comes, am I wasting my time streaming because I'm never going to be able to keep to a schedule? Therefore, building up a community is going to be very, very difficult, I think, without the schedule. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the way that I'm trying to explore this is, okay, let's come at, come at it from the other angle. What if I stream stuff either I would be doing anyway or what if I stream stuff and then can use what I learn in the stream, use that stuff as a blog post or a YouTube video or as the basis for a talk or like I'm not just doing four hours of streaming and then 
it is in the bin, you know, it's like, oh, but I can use this code that I wrote on stream somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes, yep. it doesn't matter if there's only five people watching because the time you've spent isn't just streaming, you're reusing that content somewhere else. So that that's, that's precisely what I'm trying to do myself because it's only me and I, this is my, my part-time thing. It's like a, yeah. a gig that I do after hours. Um, it's uh, what, what, I, what I try and do is I look at the side projects that I would like to build and then I build those on Twitch. Uh, and that way I'm, I'm building the thing that I yeah. want to build and I'm helping the community if there is a community at the time I'm of, of doing it. And if, yeah. there, if there isn't anybody on the thing, I haven't actually lost anything because I'm actually, I've actually gained an hour's worth of, of developing. But I would also say that blogs, YouTube and Twitch can all go in hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. So you've got, you've, you you can do your live stream, you can then put that onto YouTube and then you can write a blog and you can embed the YouTube video in there. So, so they yeah, can all, and, they can and all I mean, work. I've, I, oh, sorry. I, I thought I, I, no, I was, I was just uh, going to say they can, it's like a triangle. Once you've got the triangle of all the three points, you know, it, 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 it they will go in hand in hand. And if you, if, yeah. you, if you're advertising the Twitch on the blog, as well as the YouTube, then they all, they all work in sort of like harmony. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, tr I tried doing a stream round a blog post. Uh, I haven't been able to stream in two weeks. Like my laptop's dead mm. and it's, I, 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 it's incredibly delicate setup when you're streaming. Like it I is. could, yeah. Yeah. I, I look, I could, I'm working on my own personal laptop at the moment. My Twilio laptop's in the shop. Mm -hmm. I should, if I'd have known it was going to be this long, I would have cut my losses and got a dev environment set up here and get everything ready on this laptop because mm. I'm missing streaming. But I thought it was only going to be like a week and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to spend the time and energy trying to get everything set up. I'll mm. wait till my other laptop comes back and it hasn't come back. And it's mm. like, mm. so I'm, I'm, I mean, next week I'm going to stream whatever happens. If, mm. if it means this, I have to set up this new lap, this secondary laptop, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the blog posts, I've written a blog post that seems to be okay. The numbers aren't incredible, but it's a personal blog post. Mm. Um, I'd love to have the time and energy to, to edit my streams down to, for YouTube. I don't have the patience for that kind of video editing, like two hours of content into 30 minutes or something. I just don't have the patience for it. So, so I, I used to do that, right? And like, you know, that, that, that killed the day. It was, it was like the, the Sunday would go. That would be it. So I, I don't bother anymore. I just put them on. Yeah, and I'm just putting them up just because yeah. they're there. Just because, like, I think because I'm a Twitch affiliate, I get like 30 days or 60 days on the the, the replays. Oh, okay. Replays stay yeah, up yeah, on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, like, but I still just put them all up onto YouTube immediately. Like, yeah. the next day, I just yeah. post them up onto YouTube because it's one click of a button, right, in, sure, in sure. Twitch to just push it up there and, yeah. and maybe 15 minutes of metadata editing and messing around to put up a decent thumbnail and stuff. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure going back to your original question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure what I want to get out of streaming. I just, and I, I, I'm very much investigating it. I love doing it. I'd happily do it like forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I find it fun mm -hmm. and interesting. And so, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. I guess if, if you are still enjoying it, then there's no reason to stop. And if, if, if you ever play back your stream and you think that there's lots of value there, then you should continue. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Before we go any further though, I mean, we've talked about streaming and all, all sorts. What is your stream handle? Let's put that down. Oh yeah. Uh, for some reason. So on Twitter, I'm at GWHGH. But on, for some reason, like on Twitch, I'm Spabby, S P A W B Y, <laughs> which is an old gaming uh moniker i had so when i joined twitch like i don't know how long twitch has been going but i've been i've been joined for watching streams on there for a long, okay. long time right um and because i love watching streams as much as i love mm -hmm. streaming myself like i love watching streams i'll often just have a stream on the second monitor while i'm working or you know whatever so i've got a lot of people I know who I see on the same streams that I watch. So I'm, I'm at this moment in time, I'm genuinely thinking about changing my Twitch handle to, to fit in with the rest of my 
kind of online persona. Well, I, I, mu- I must say that when when you um, when you went when you watched this, my stream and then you mentioned in the comment, I wasn't too sure who it was. Yeah, <laughs> was exactly. Because like, and, and, I know who then, you are on Twitch on Twitter, right? That's that's uh, that's an obvious. But then that's <laughs> the thing. Then of course, like I, I don't want to lose friendships I got when I'm watching gaming streams who wouldn't have a clue who I was. Should I change my handle? Right. Mm, and there's some there's some streamers I support with subs with subscriptions gaming mm-hmm. streamers because like they are they are doing this for a job and i feel like I, you should you should mm. if you can give someone a fi- you know five dollars a month yeah yeah and they are producing I, I there's some streamers who i'll watch in a month i'll probably watch at least 20 hours of content that mm. they produce mm-hmm. like even if i'm not like full-on watching it yeah. oh it's there and i'm listening because yeah. like when i work remote i often just have something on just so there's human speaking yeah me, me, me like, too I'm not really listening to yeah it. it's just oh humans are speaking i don't feel lonely anymore yeah so. yeah I, I sometimes have it on the screen behind me um yeah. and it's just playing in the background on a loop maybe um or podcasts and i really like listening to podcasts um and uh yeah you, i'm a remote de- developer too so i do i do understand i emphasize with the, the need of having something in the background um <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I think yeah. I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and go. Look, I'm gonna rename. I'm gonna. I'm gonna line this stuff up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can just like. I'll just have to do what I think because it's it's kind of getting into marketing 101. It's really important to have unified branding, um, and that's a fact. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's very very important. Yeah. Um, and my GitHub handle and my Twitter handle and all of the Slack. So I'm in handle. All the handles are the same except for my Twitch. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, I probably should do that. I mean, I've I've been looking at streaming on YouTube as well. I don't know what um what benefits Twitch is bringing me at the moment for a for a coding platform. And we have good chats in in an internal Twilio uh, live streaming channel about this. You know, uh, yeah, I I. I... I so I used to do I used to I started YouTube uh, streaming that was where I started the live streams from and um yeah I it's okay but I I just think Twitch has a little bit more uh value for the engagement there's things in there like commands that you can actually put in the chat mm. uh, and I I there might be now I haven't looked but there wasn't any like anything like that in YouTube it felt like they were trying to catch up um yeah so yeah and yeah. and 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 also as someone who's got a youtube channel diversification is awesome so to have an audience on both platforms is is yeah. is so good that makes perfect sense yeah you youtube is kind of a, a place where you watch polished content it's content that has been edited clean if it's a live stream it's usually a live stream that's already happened yeah so you you kind of accept yeah, the fact that's that fair. it's a bit raw, raw. Um, but yeah. So what, what's the, what's the worst part of streaming? Um, when, when things like go wrong, like the last stream, everyone was hearing an echo on the stream and I'm like, mm. I haven't touched anything. Damn it. <laughs> like, you know, I literally haven't touched anything. And then you you can't, you're on the stream and people are watching you as you try and firefight this problem. <laughs> and there's not really anything you could do. Like that is one thing I would say. It, it's virtually impossible for you to like just spin up a test stream. Mm. And because mm. everyone who's following you gets a notification. Yeah. Right. 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 It's, it's highly right. embarrassing. <laughs> I, oh, I'm just going to spin up this three minute test stream. And then you've got 10 people joining and you're like, Oh Jesus, sorry. Uh, you know, so when things go wrong, it's really bad. Mm-hmm. And I guess with, I, I, I know enough about, I mean, I use um, OBS, which I guess most people use mm-hmm. to stream. Um, I, I, I use one of the branded ones by like Streamlabs or something, but it's OBS, right? It, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. I don't know enough about what to do to fix problems when they happen yet. And so that's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I've been like, record. I know you can just record an OBS. So that's one way you can test how things are going on without having to actually mm. launch a live stream. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of weeks ago I was streaming and uh, uh, one of the people in chat were questioning everything I was doing and it was coming across quite passively aggressive. Like you're wrong. 
Mm. Um, but the person had come in really late, so didn't realize what I was doing in the context of what I'm doing. And then you have to be kind of diplomatic and go, look, you know, here's my Twitter. Just hit me up. But I, and then in all honesty, I had like an hour conversation on Twitter DM with mm. the person, and they're amazing. They made very good points. Mm. But I just had to keep saying on stream, you, you, you've you, missed the point where I've given context for what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Mm. And all the questions you're asking me, I've already covered 10 minutes ago. Mm. You know, so... I, I, we're going to move on now and I'm going to ignore you. Sorry. <laughs> you know, so it, it's embarrassing, but you, you know, there, if you've got five people watching and one person is trying to like dominate and monopolize your time, you have to think of the other four people, right? Yep. Yep. Totally true. Yep. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's a, it's a, it's very weird because like it's extremely raw. People can actually see you coding. And that is something that we, you know, th that never really existed a good few years ago. Um, it's, it, I kind of see it like, um, sort of community code reviews, right? So people are reviewing your code as you're typing and there's more of them than there are of you. So they can spot the, the bugs quicker than you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that bit I don't mind is like when people are questioning yeah. your overall yeah. decision making. Sure. Because I think the, the the massive value of live coding, wherever mm -hmm. it may be, if it's in a conference, if it's in a webinar, if it's on Twitch, is, and I always found this, is that people realize that even though I've been doing this for I don't know how long, like since 1999. So it's like 20 years now. Is that, is that 30 years? I don't want to think about it. Like 20 years, <laughs> yeah. Um, 20 years, Jesus. Like I still am Googling every like five minutes. I'm like, oh, I, I can't remember how that works. Let's Google it. Bang. Mm -hmm. right. And and they, they think that when they see people, because I'm like really vocal on Twitter, uh, on twi uh, Twitter and I've got opinions and I've worked for some very high-end consultancies Mm -hmm. They they imagine that you're like this, some kind of magician who knows all the orders of every functions, parameters and properties. And like, I don't. And I think the value of live streaming is not about people watching you type characters into an editor. I think the value of live streaming or live coding is about people being able to see your thought processes and being to see how you think about things and when you consider things. Because often I'll say, I'm just going to get this down and we'll come back and refactor it later. I just want to check that the logic I've got is right and the test pass. I'm going to come back and improve it later. Blah. And then, all right, the test pass, right. How can we make this look a little bit more elegant? Mm. And I think that those are the things that people learn from mm. rather than, oh, I didn't realize there was this array function that can do something I've been doing mm. in four lines of code in one line of code. That stuff is immaterial to me. Mm. Like I don't care. Mm. I don't care about that stuff. What I do love to see is, oh, that's why I never thought about doing something that way. Mm -hmm. Or ha, that person makes the same mistake as I make all the time. You know, yeah. those are where the value are for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I do totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, I, I've done some courses for like Manning and Pact and stuff and, and they have been, they have to have been clean, like no mistakes, yeah. like proper, th th this is how it works uh, without any, uh, with any, any rough edges. Um, so for me doing those things and then going to Twitch was quite challenging because it was like, oh no, I've made a mistake. And I had to retrain myself not to have a, cause, cause usually when I make a mistake, I would have a nice long pause. And then I would see that in the edit, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you'd go bang, right? <laughs> and then I'd chop go, that out. chop yeah. that out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, but the, the the last stream I did, we were, we, I wrote some code, then I wrote some tests, and the uh, purists will tell me I should have written the tests first, and that's fine. <laughs> um, come at me on my Twitch stream, uh, <laughs> twitch.tv slash spabby, that's yeah. fine. Um <laughs> But I wrote the tests and mm. the tests were failing. And I immediately thought, oh, shit, I've uh, I've written something wrong in the test here. So I'm like, mm. oh, the test looks really good. And then when I looked at the code, the test was right, but I'd made a bug in the code that I wrote, first of all. Right. And it's like that kind of thing yeah. is what is so amazing on a live stream for me. Because yeah. everyone was laughing, oh, you planned that. And I'm like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> this is why tests are so super cool. Because yeah. yeah. they found them, yeah. they literally found the bug live yeah. on stream, you know. Yeah. That's where the value is for me, those interactions. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess in a, in a way, you've kind of answered the question that you asked before is sort of what is the value of mm. streaming? Yeah, yeah. I no, yeah. sorry. I I certainly uh, appreciate the value of streaming. The question I'm trying to answer, which I should have made myself clearer, is 
is that is the the value worth the time at I the see. moment? It's a cost benefit analysis. I'm doing. Sure, okay, that, I see. But that that makes it sound like really business, business, business. I, I'll never stop streaming. My the reason I'm asking this question is I'm trying to figure out what I'm best spending my time for. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. I think, well, you know, I should be, I could, I should be. The cost benefit analysis tells me that streaming is incredibly valuable for the time I put in. Then I'll do it more. Yeah. If it's like, oh, uh, you're not really getting a lot of reward, I'll do it the same amount. You know, yeah. that's that's the point. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Okay. So. Before we head off, there is a question that I, I ask, uh, every, every person who comes on the, on the show. Uh, and that is if you could talk to your former self, what advice would you give? It could be more than one and it doesn't have to be a technical thing. Wow. Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> it's a really good question. And, um, there's a couple of things like technically I was really late. I mean, we literally just touched on it, and and but I'll I'll repeat it. I was sure. really late to the unit testing party and the automated testing party. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I'd have picked that up a lot earlier in my career because I would have saved hundreds of hours of despair and things crashing and call outs and all that stuff. So technically, I would definitely have said like, yeah, just just it's not that difficult a concept as we had touched on earlier on. It sounds a lot more difficult than it is. The the nuances of it can be difficult, but just pick that up as soon as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is, like, uh, the personally, I I wish that I'd have I'd been maybe uh, a little bit more uh, empathetic empathetic early on in my career. Um, empathy is something I practice as much as I physically can now. I think it's like a developer superpower to to use empathy. Um, so that was definitely something I wish. Like, I I. I feel like there's two ways it really can help you. It can help you like commercially to think like your users. Mm -hmm. So put yourself in your user's shoes, which is one of the core tenants of actually Twilio's uh, beliefs. But that's been my own belief is like, oh, can I think like my user? Then when you're designing UIs and process, that's a massive benefit. But even more importantly, like to get on with colleagues to just to be around other humans, mm-hmm. you practice and empathy is like massively important for me. Understanding, oh, that person was blunt at me this morning. Oh yeah, but they were working till half past 10 last night because we had that outage. So I'll cut them some slack and won't say anything. You know, that kind of basic empathy is so important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's such a good trait to have. It's such a, it's such a good trait to have. And I do agree, more people need to... Um yeah try try and do that i think um yeah and it's something yeah, you can learn it's, it's, it's a practice it's a practice it's not one of these like oh you know you're either naturally good at it or you're not no. you can practice it yeah it's, yeah it's 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 like you've got to come out of the moment and and sort of assess it a little bit you know ooh, why are they being a little bit hot to me what what, what, yeah. what is going on in their life that i'm not aware of that kind of thing yeah yeah no i, I totally agree with that that's such a such a good tip um, is there anything else that you want to, you want to add, um, before we, before we shoot off? Not at all. No, no. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for That's having lovely. me uh, on. I'm delighted to be here. No worries. No worries. Well, thank you ever so much. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Gary. And, uh, uh you, for those watching on the YouTubes and listening on the podcast, happy coding everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.